Greetings to us and welcome to another video. So this is week number eight of deck report. Uh, I have week six and week seven skipped because uh, week six, which was the week after my regional deck report, I was on family vacation. And week number seven, uh, I just had a lot of uh, OBS issues. So I just wanted to take the rest of the month of May to just work things out and just like be prepared to like flesh out better my content uh, but now we're on week eight and i actually did go to a big event this weekend it was a 3v3 tournament hosted by tower games uh here in Puerto rico and it had a total of 18 teams which was 54 players and our team ended on a 3-1-1 record I kind of wanted to be prepared for that event as much as possible. And the deck choice that I made for that week was Centurion. I kind of want to talk about why I picked Centurion be uh, besides the Labyrinth on Chain Pile. Because I was like showing that deck for a while now. Uh, if we look at the current format right now, we already know the Snake Eyes is like the most dominant deck. We already know that... A lot of people just lean towards hand traps being like a very favorable thing uh, when it comes to this format. I'm not a really big fan of that. And that is something that kind of hurts the Labyrinth Pile deck a little bit. It's not that the deck is not resilient to those kind of interactions. But I, I kept losing to Snake Eyes. And it's not because of Snake Eyes engine. It's not because of how strong the Snake Eyes deck is. It's not because I cannot break boards. It's because of their non-engine. They have so many non-engine in their toolbox that they just are accustomed to what you try to do with your strategy. And I just kept losing to a lot of them. Like, there was one game where I got Nibiru two turns in a row. Uh, like, once on my turn and once on my opponent's turn. And there was one game where I got Ash Blossomed on, like, Big Welcome Labyrinth. And then when I tried to play through that, then I got Ghost Belled. And when I tried to play through that, then I got, like, uh, pummeled by the deck's actual interaction. Which is, like, Appaloosa, Flamberge, IP, Promethean Princess. And sometimes when you just face those kind of interactions backed up by hand traps it just becomes very overwhelming even if you're playing a board breaking deck uh so i felt like centurion was just going to be a better choice centurion uh is not that bad against hand traps the only hand trap that really really hurts you is ghost ogre and snow rabbit which is kind of popular yeah, a lot of people are playing it especially because of the existence of tempai dragons but it's not like in the top like line of hand traps that people are playing and there are interactions and ways to play around it with your extension or your non engine uh the other th reason why i picked centurion as well is because uh i think this is a really good time for you to practice with centurion we're going to have uh infinite forbidden uh in around one month from now and Prior to that, we're getting Battles of Legends, which will show some cards that will support this team alongside with the support from Fair Forbidden. But I will get to that like later on as time goes on. Uh, not many people know how to play around uh, against Centurion as well, which is a really big advantage to your favor as well. The deck is super under the radar. It has a very, very uh, strong win condition. Uh as well and yeah i just gonna go through uh the list and then i'll talk about the changes that i've done since the last time i profiled it i also have a pile of cards right here these are like pretty much everything i tested this week when it came to a centurion deck so it, just to show you how flexible the strategy is and how many things you can do with it uh but yeah without further ado uh, let's begin um three primera Two Trudea, one Gargoyle, that's it for Centurions. Three uh, Lubellion, uh, Magnamut, Druid's Worm, Saronir, Baldrake, and a new addition is Bestial Luber. I'll explain that later. Uh, two Rockets still. I'm still playing the Grand Toss Dragon. 
That's 17 monsters, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. It's either 16 or 17. You guys can do the count. Uh, spell cards, there's a lot more. Um, three stand-up. Three emblema, the best card. Three uh, quick launch uh, for your rocket engine. Uh, three talents. Three droplets. Two chalice. Branded beast. Uh, phalanx, boot sector, uh, call by terraforming and centurion, centurion bonds, and render regained. The deck is 41 cards in the main. Uh, extra deck Calamity, Auxilla, Cosmic, Crimson, Legatia. These are for the 12s. Uh, for the 10s, Chaos Angel and Dispater. For the 8s, uh, Scarlight and Archfiend. Uh, XYZs, uh, Typhon and Ding. And for the Link Monsters, you have Spheres, IP, SP, and Striker Dragon. Um, before we talk to... Uh, talk about the side deck and the other pair of options i'll talk about the main deck first so uh new additions that i've made since the last time you saw the list were branded beast uh the forbidden cards and bestial aluber everything else should be around the same from the last list so, I'll explain the Bestial Luber first. Uh, it's a searchable tuner that's level 4 from Bestial Lubelion. Uh, until Infinite Forbidden, we're still lacking tuners in this deck, which is one of the Centurion's biggest issues. Our only main tuner is Primera. So, having another level 4 tuner that can just bridge you into Auxila uh, is still is very ideal. Uh, so... Lubelion just searching this is uh, kind of cool. The other th really cool thing about this card is if you're facing Tempai Dragons and you end on Heretic Seal, uh, some Tempai Dragon interactions involved uh, summoning the super powerful uh, Synchro 10 before entering the battle phase uh, while the field spell is up. So something that you can do is you can Heretic Seal, Tribute, Bounce the Sangen Summoning, and then Special Summon uh, the Aluber from the deck. And Aluber, and Aluber has the effect that it can take control or Special Summon from the Graveyard, a Dragon Monster your opponent has. So what you can do is you can use the Aluber itself to take control of the Tempai Synchro. And the Tempai Synchro itself makes it so your opponent really can't do anything about it because it just freezes the battle phase. Uh, sadly, the control is until the end of the turn, so they get the dragon back after the t uh, after the end of the turn, but uh, it secures you from being OTK'd because you just take control of their big monster. So if unless they have ways to like freeze it or stop it, uh, they're pretty much just stuck there. Um, so that's like re one really cool interaction that this card has. If you decide to play um, like the um, Alba Lanatus, this card is treated as Falling of Albas while on the field or graveyard. So you can also have fun interactions with this, like just uh, fusing away your opponent's uh, dragon monsters. So that's the reason for the Bestial Luber. Um, in testing, it was super super cool in theory i did not summon it once uh at least in the tournament i did summon it once like casually uh and it was almost always sighted out but it was still a really cool option to have so uh droplets and chalice uh for the longest time i've been playing this deck without any hand traps outside of bestials i just don't like hand traps like at least in this kind of deck because 
uh, Centurion is a deck that kind of really needs their starters. They kind of want as many combination of cards for uh, for them to play the game as much as possible. And if your opponent rips your hand with talents, uh, that makes it very, very, very difficult for you to play. I didn't want to lose to talents. I didn't want to lose to cross out. Uh, those were two really, really popular cards in a lot of people's lists. So I just leaned towards just playing other options that just don't fall to those cards. You can make the counter argument that cross out can be used for uh, droplets. But if you send spell cards with droplets, they cannot chain cross out. So droplets is really good on that regard. Uh, not many people are forbidden chalice. Uh, Infinite Impermanence is just a lot more common than this. This is why you don't see play uh, see me playing Impermanence. Impermanence makes a lot more sense. However, it is a card that people can cross out. Uh, just going second with Chalice or just going first and just setting it as like a basic negate is really, really good. And the fact that people don't have this as their cross out target, at least not many people do, uh, just makes it very, very favorable for you. Uh, the last card is the Brand of Beast. So I kind of just wanted something against like stun decks in the main deck. I kind of wanted something for Runic Stun, for example. And this is just another card that you can just place with the Lobelion. This can grab you back the Brand of Regained. So if you fall into a grind game, uh, this card is just going to help you secure the grind game a lot more. Uh, I... I'm not playing branded etude, etude of the branded because that card is a real brick. It really relies on your bestials to, in order for making it work. This card is also a brick. However, uh, the utility that you have under this card is a lot more than you would with etude of the branded. Uh, adding to that, like, it's super easy to just get to this card. Like you're playing through Lavelli on your deck. Uh, it did came up. In the 3v3 tournament, because one of my opponents, Charles Tupaolo, uh, was playing uh, Paleozoic and just shame, just like interacting with their chain links to make their uh, Paleos mistiming uh, came up a lot, and Branded Beast was very good for that. I just kept doing it every single turn. Um, but yeah, that's it for the changes in the main deck. Uh, stuff that I probably would take out in the future. Uh, I think that Grand Toss Dragon did not come up. The one time it came up, I got Ash Blossom on Spheres. So it really wasn't very helpful there. But for those who are wondering why it is this card in here, I did say in a past entry on that profile, but this is just another interruption from Seals. And this can pop two cards. And it's also level 8, so it helps to make your Centurion Synchros uh, if you pair Alonso Primera. Uh, in the future, I might just move this to the side deck if I know that I'm going first. But until now, um, this card was just not that great. Uh, it's also not a really good draw. Thankfully, I did not draw it. So, for the extra deck... One of the newest additions into this deck is IP Mascarina. And I guess I'll talk about that. Uh, Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend is another one. Um, I guess I'll start with Scarlight first. So, I promise you, this card is not for time. Uh, like, uh, this is mainly an option for Rocket Tracer in order to just try to break an opponent's board if you're going second with your Rocket Engine. It's also a Dark Dragon, so you can tribute it to summon Lubellion. And it's also level 8, so you can make your Centurion Synchros with it. Uh, that's mainly the main purpose of this card. In the future, you might uh, look into playing the uh, Vision Resonator Engine because it does interact with this card. It like makes it so this card can be recurred every turn, and not only that, uh, it also makes it so you can book all of your opponent's monsters 
before like when you enter the battle phase and that does come up because it's non-targeting setting up monsters so it plays around the melo melodious monsters it plays around like other monsters that just have like very uh specific forms of protection it plays around the voiceless voice uh like barrier spell as well so that's just one thing to like consider for the future uh so the other one other one is ip i do not make this as a typical part of my end board the main reason this card is in here is if i get nibiru so uh, almost always my end board is going to involve this plus Legatia, like these two cards. If the Legatia is negated uh, halfway through your combo like with something like Valor or Imperm, I link it away uh, for the Spheres, and then I just uh, reborn it with Centurion Phalanx, the trap card. Just to have a clean interaction with your uh, with its end phase effect. Uh, but if you get nibiru one thing that you can do is with the Heretic Seal, you summon a uh, Bestial Magnamut from the deck. And then with Magnamut, you activate this effect for the end phase. Magnamut is going to grab you uh, Bestial Druid Swarm. And then you link away the token and the Magnamut in order to make the IP. So uh, in your opponent's turn, you just summon the Druid Swarm, you link away these two, and these two like just make the SP Little Knight. And then you have the interruption from Little Knight, the interruption from Druid Swarm, and if your opponent like plays into it, this is, you have the SP itself as a third interaction. So that's three interruptions if you can be rude. Uh, which is very important uh, for this deck. Another thing that you can do is if you end on Field Spell plus Trudea, because that does come up as well. So let's say you have a Standoff Centurion and you have Trudea in your Spell and Trap Zone. You have even more interruptions because what you can do here is you can summon the Trudea, then summon the Magnamore. I mean the Druid Swarm, you can use Field Spell, turn these two into Chaos Angel. And then you have the interruption from Chaos Angel, the interruption from the Druid Swarm, and then link these two away, and then SP, and that's two more interruptions. So essentially you end on four interruptions, even if you get Nibiru, which is something that does come up I actually lost one match because I did not do that play. I did not play well around uh, Murner Nibiru, which is something that they did on me on like my first round. But uh, I think that was just like one neat interaction that you can learn that you can do in this deck if you get Nibiru uh, with Heretic Seal. Uh, there are other options. You can play a second Heretic Seal. And just play that way. But uh, you can also play Lina, the Light Charmer. Uh, if you have a way of getting rid of the Nibiru, you can just reborn it and then just make stuff like Link Climbing to Appaloosa. You can summon Selene. Selene can bring back Primera if you did not use Primera Search Effect, uh, which is an important detail that I have to mention. Uh, but yeah, uh, I liked it. Uh, I think I'll keep it in the future, especially. It, but yeah. It's just one interaction against Nibiru that is kind of good to mention. Uh, like I said, I don't, uh, I didn't calamity lock many people. I only did it like twice against Snake Eyes one round. Uh, it did one minute match. So, and one of the ways that you play calamity. So if you're a Centurion player and you have calamity as uh, like your interaction, one thing that I always like doing is. If my opponent plays into talents and I look at their hand and I see that they have nothing for calamities or they have one interaction to stop calamities, I just get rid of it and I just let them keep their engine, let them keep like their starter cards or like their extenders and just play to make the calamity because their one draw has to be an out. If they don't have the right out, like 
you just freeze the entire turn and their engine just doesn't matter anymore. Uh, I only did that once. Uh, the talents play, I only did it once. I did Calamity Lock twice. Um, blindly. The Cosmic Blazer is also there because there is one Ember that you can make in this deck that involves like, uh, like combo extending with Gargoyle that makes it end on both Auxila and the Cosmic Blazer and then on the following turn, just Calamity Lock. Uh, the other reason for Cosmic Blazer is people will be smart on trying to stop uh, Crimson Dragon. They know it, the people that know the Crimson Dragon can make this mistiming are just going to try to spot removal it and then you can do is chain the effect but you just summon the Cosmic Blazer instead and that's just one interaction against your opponent and they already wasted their engine card that they tried to use uh, to stop you. Um, I think that's it for the updated extra deck. Uh, everything else just is very cookie cutter. Pretty much the same thing as last list. So other cards that I considered. Uh, so the first one of the first things I considered was Forbidden Lands. So we're in a world where Tempai needs a lot more board breakers than hand traps to stop you. Uh, I think Forbidden Lands is kind of important because one of your win conditions against Tempai Dragons is summoning Chaos Angel. If you summon Chaos Angel and you make it with a light and dark attribute, which is Primera plus a bestial pretty much, uh, your opponent cannot do anything about this card outside of Imperms or Droplets. Uh, if they Imperm or try to Droplet this, you can use Forbidden Lands, Forbidden Lands to protect this, and this just becomes unaffected and in case you were wondering how can i dodge forbidden uh droplet with the lance uh many tenpai players are not playing trap cards outside of imperm imperm so what you can do is if they droplets chain link one or two or three or whatever and they do not send a trap card you can trudea as chain to chain over the over the droplets and then you can chain forbidden lands to the true day effect and that is your bridge into just like making it immune to ta uh to droplets and if you can freeze uh, the droplets on this you also are freezing like uh interactions against your other synchros like auxila so that's like one option i considered Uh, another option I considered, and I'll probably make a separate video on it, is the Chinese Sarcophagus engine. So for those wondering what this engine means for the deck, um, the Chinese Sarcophagus can search Gandora, and Gandora is a dark level 8 dragon monster, meaning that it can be used as a, uh, your synchro material for your Centurions, it can be used uh, for your dragon uh, plays. It can be fodder for Lubelion as well. And uh, the really cool thing is if you're going second, this card can also break boards because this card essentially is a board nuke in, its, uh, in itself. And if you pair this up with like Forbidden Lands or with Forbidden Droplets, you can pretty much play around a lot of interactions your opponent tries to do on you. And not only does it destroy, it banishes. The one caveat to this engine is that in order for you to do Gandora's uh, nuke effect, you have to summon from the deck uh, like one of Gold Sarcophagus monsters. So you ca they can actually blossom this effect. So that's something very important to mention. But more importantly, if you don't have another monster for this engine, uh, you cannot do that effect. That's where the gadget comes in. Uh, the gadget is pretty much the best target because uh, if you open it, it's not entirely a brick because the gadget can search you the sarcophagus and the sarcophagus can summon you the Gandora. Yes, you don't get Gandora's nuke effect. However, you're still getting three free cards out of this interaction with the gadget. Uh, if you do resolve Gandora's effect, the Gandora is going to special the gadget from the deck. The gadget is going to search you another uh, 
sarcophagus and that's just like three free cards that you're getting out of this interaction uh, another really cool thing about the sarcophagus is it cannot be destroyed by monster effects so they cannot nightmare phoenix this they cannot ghost ogre this they cannot like uh, black rose this uh, just to name you know, a couple of like examples so yeah this is a really cool engine that i thought about i did online testing with it and it was kind of cool but i kind of wanted the, the deck to be as streamlined as possible that's why i didn't play this engine uh during that event um the other engine is chaos space with like a mini dragon link engine uh this is something that one of the china nationals did and it's like one of the really cool like centurion decks that uh have been popping around uh i think one really strong engine for dragon link decks in general is the centurion engine since you do no longer have boral savage dragon it's just like one other strong interaction you can do against your opponent that being said i did test these cards and these cards were not bad the issue that i had with these cards is that they don't solidify or make their place better they're just another engine that just sticks out uh i felt like these cards were just a little bit way more it plays into uh a few other hand traps a lot more it kind of it gives you a higher ceiling, but it gives you more weaknesses. Uh, which is something I kind of wanted to prevent happening. Uh, alongside this, I played... I also tried out the Revolution Engine. I tried uh, like this, and I tried the uh, Levianir. Uh, with not that many monsters in your deck, uh, Levianir just really doesn't come up a lot. Like, it's good for breaking boards but like you already have other ways to do that uh, it, like for example like the sarcophagus engine is just a lot better um, but yeah uh, I took out Noctovision and I took out like Samsara because again it just didn't contribute to your end boards that much it's just more extenders that you can play in your deck that really just does not start their place I wanted the deck to be as consistent as possible as concrete if you just resolve your centurion engine you shouldn't have a lot of issues whether you go first or second uh like there are just good enough cards for breaking boards like for example chaos angel like the chaos art uh, like this guy uh the chaos arch fiend is another really good board breaker like you have enough ways to just play around what your opponent tries to do with your cards Side deck. So, uh, three deck lockdown, three cosmic, three dark ruler, duster, change of heart, three evenly, and wake up. Uh, a true wake up centurion awakening. So, uh, with the with the existence of Centurion Auxila, you don't need to play like Solemn Judgment or like Solemn Scolding or any of those cards because this card is searchable and there's like very very easy ways to just make this card live in this deck. Uh, if your opponent lets you resolve half your plays, you just have very strong like interactions against them, and this also solidifies your like deck lockdown play. Uh, for those who don't know, Deck Lockdown has a niche interaction with Centurion Auxila. Uh, like, with Centurion Auxila on board, it makes it so your opponent cannot destroy, uh, like, the Deck Lockdown. But the also the other thing is that uh, after the second standby phase, this does not self-destruct. And this stays on the board after the second standby phase because of Auxila's effect. So, it... Out of every floodgate in the game, I just felt like this is like one of the stronger ones. Uh, it stops uh, summoning from the deck as well as adding cards. So, like, against Snake Eyes, this card is just super detrimental to their strategy. Against, like, other decks, like, even Jubel even loses to this card because they have a lot of deck interactions. So... Uh, I'm not a fan of playing Floodgates in this deck, especially since, like, Calamities is just another Floodgate. 
and if you resolve like calamities you shouldn't really need anything else however the way the game is progressing right now uh some decks are just getting way too aggressive at just breaking your board so just having interactions like this is kind of helpful every centurion list that i've seen in the ocg plays this card and i kind of get it uh i kind of just wanted to try it out myself i never drew it so i can't uh give you a firm judgment on it but again it's been on every centurion list that i've seen topping the ocg so i think this card's good um but I can't say until I actually play it. Uh, so, Dark Ruler. I was really, really afraid of the voiceless voice matchup. Uh, Saravis is just a very, very problematic card against your deck. Uh, there's not many ways to interact with the voiceless voice end board with your engine. So, this card is just very, very strong. Uh... You can play base deals to like mitigate what the deck can do, but if that deck opens very decent, like even base deals are not enough to just freeze that deck. So this card is really good on that regard. Same thing with evenly. Uh, you can just pair evenly with this and droplets, and you just have enough ways to just break the board. This I also wanted something else for runic stun, and that's where these seven cards come in. Like. Uh. Because even though Runic Stun is not like super popular in my area, it is a very scary deck. That deck has been topping events like left and right. There's a reason it was undefeated in Indianapolis on Swiss until top 32. Like, I just really want to, to respect the matchup as well as other rogue matchups. And, that, and that's the reason I'm playing this uh, these cards. Um... Did I die? did I like the deck? I loved it. I think the deck is fantastic. Uh, so, explaining my losses, I lost to Tempai Dragons because I did make a misplay. I did not read uh, Nibiru in his hand, and I played right into it without doing the uh, special IP play that I wanted to make. And I lost. And I uh, I lost to that on game three. Uh, the guy opened. Everything non engine, and then he top deck terraforming, which got him to Sangen summoning, and I had no way to stop that, so I lost that match. Uh, my second loss was to Kashtira. Uh, game all three games they open shifter. Uh, I don't really lose to shifter in this deck unless I open very specific cards that are just weak to it, like for example, stand up centurion. Uh, however, uh shifter paired up with like blow up cards like for example like sun and judgment are really really strong and like no most no deck can play through that uh i lost game three for them opening double sun and judgment like they did so double sun and judgment with their end board through shifter and like i oh i i did open uh evenly and i drew into this but again Two solemn judgments. Uh, that was enough to stop these cards. Um, but yeah. Uh, sadly, that's part of the game. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I hope you found this informative. I hope you found this to your liking, understanding. Uh, more deck profiles coming soon. More videos coming soon. Keep practicing and keep dueling. <laughs>